you know, a friend of mine asked me, they said, Cook, what are you doing for Father's Day? And I told them, absolutely nothing. They said, your kids aren't taking you out for Father's Day? I said, my children have never given me a Father's Day gift. Never. They said, but you, you got five kids. And the way you treat those kids, like you treat them like gold. And they never gave you one? I said, they've never given me a Father's Day gift. You know, and I, it, you know, I used to scratch my head and, and wonder, you know, why? <laughs> I remember giving one of them some money to get me a Father's Day gift. And they spent it. I remember giving them a, uh, money to get a Christmas gift. And they spent it. You know, like I've never been an absent dad. Never, ever, 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 ever. You know, I used to drive an hour to go pick one up and drive another hour to go pick three up and then drive some more and go pick the other one up. I would get them all at one time, faithfully. You know, the weekends, like I never ever literally missed a beat, you know, and I remember we used to go to the store and people would ridicule me. Not looking at it as a, a single dad, you know, with five kids that's taking the liberty to be in his kid's life. But they would call me the basketball team, so on and so forth. But, you know, I thought that things would have gotten better when they got 18. That they would have, you know, things would have gotten better in terms of, you know, our relationship. Because... You know, I've always been involved in their schooling. You know, every principal at all of their schools from elementary up, um, every counselor, every teacher, like I've won parent of the year numerous times. You know, there were times where I would go get my, my children or my boys. I would drive an hour to get them. And I'd be on the phone with my buddy. And my buddy would say to me, Cook, I know you're still not waiting for them. Man, you need to drive off. And week after week, I would go over there and they still wouldn't come out. And so one of my buddies said, man, you know, with your kids and the stuff that you have to deal with them and, I mean, you know, deal with their mother and stuff like that. He said, man, I would, uh, I wouldn't even go back around them anymore. Just wait till they turn 18 and then try to reconnect with them. But you can't keep taking yourself through that. But I decided to hang in there because God gave me the duty as a dad. And to this day, I'm still their dad and we still correspond and, you know, we still have a great relationship. It just never you know, I'm not going to say it's, that it's not too great, but they just, um, you know, I thought that when they turned 18, things would have gotten better because now they're adults and they can hold their own. Um, but no, nah, it's just, it is what it is. You know, it used to, it used to sting a little bit because, you know, people would ask me like, why? Like, you know, all of their friends, wish I was their dad and to this day their friends still text me and um, you know say happy father's day or they'll text me you know see how I'm doing because a lot of their friends you know I, I made it my business to not only meet their friends but meet their friends parents you know like I was involved like I'm involved in my kids life you know but yet I'm at least celebrated you know, it's, it's not painful anymore. It used to be painful, but it's not painful anymore. And they probably they probably see this video, but I don't. Even, it doesn't matter to me because I want to, you know, I want to to bless somebody out there. So I want to say to all of the fathers, all of the all of the parents in general, let me be your your guinea pig. You can be the best parent. I've run, I've won parent of the year multiple times. 
I've taken my kids across the states, you know, just so that they can be well-rounded. I would gather all of them up. You know, we go get the hotels just so that they can be well-rounded. Show them a different aspect of life. I'm talking about, like, being a father. I failed at a lot of things. But being a father, I mean, you know, I did the best that I could. And I promise you, it was like, yeah, I put my all into it. I put my life on hold. In fact, I went to custody. You have to be have you have to be an impeccable father um, to win custody in the state of Maryland. I'm in Maryland. So I went to court and I got custody of my son to save him uh, from his living conditions. Um, you know, he lived with me. You know, and I remember his whole family getting up on the the stand that uh, to try to testify against me, and it was just me. But you, you can't, you can't defeat God. It was just me, my lawyer, and my son. So I got custody of him. But nevertheless, you know, to all of the parents out there, let me be your guinea pig. You're wondering, where did you go wrong? You're wondering, you know, why your children, they, they don't text you, they don't call you, so on and so forth. Well, let me be your guinea pig. I promise you I did it all. I promise you that I was that dad. I am that dad. I do that thing and still be the least celebrated. No, no, no Christmas gifts, no birthday presents. I probably got like one birthday present, you know, none of it. Last year, I got a text for Father's Day. <laughs> Let me be your example that you can do everything right. I mean, I took all of the disrespect, you know, from, from their moms. I did it all. And I refused to, like, call them out their name. I did it all. I think that's probably where I went wrong, though, allowing them to disrespect me so much because I didn't want, I never wanted my kids to ever say that I disrespected their mom or something like that. But... Let me be your, your guinea pig. You can do everything right. I put my life on hold to make sure my children are good. And I have no regrets. Nah, because I know I did it. So stop wondering, you know, why they don't text you, why they don't call you and all that. Because two things are for certain. They have another seed in them. And they, they have a another influencer in their life and chances are things didn't go well with you. Chances are things didn't go well, you know, between the two parents. The second thing is, is that, you know, this is just a different generation, I guess. I don't know. But my kids, you know, they don't have no excuses. Uh, even now, you know, dad, can I borrow? I'm only as good as my last cash app. So, you know, I had, um, God is good. God, as long as his, my relationship with him doesn't change. But I want to let you know, you're a good parent. You are a great parent. In spite of, they don't text you, that's okay. They don't call you, it's okay. They don't give you gifts, it's okay. Let me be your, your crash dummy. I don't get nothing. And I don't put thousands upon thousands. I've done it all as a dad and still don't get nothing. And I'm going to be honest with you, even if they gave me a present now, I mean, I don't even know how I would receive it because it would just hit different because it's been so long and I poured in so much. Not looking for anything in return from them, but damn, you could at least, <laughs> you know, give me a card or something, the dollar store. You know what I'm saying? But such as life you are a great parent you are loved and you did nothing wrong now smile and enjoy your day celebrate God today yeah celebrate God and then smile